Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Jillian and thank you all so much for being here. So today I'm gonna to do an unboxing, first impressions of the Wandering Star Tarot by Kat Pierce. And so um, I actually don't know very much about this deck. I saw it online and I really liked a couple of the images that I saw, but other than that, I don't really know very much about it. So I'm really excited to unbox it with you today and share my first impressions. So I'm just going to grab some scissors here. It says it's an 80 card deck and guidebook. So a few additional cards. I want to see if this deck is suitable for beginners and I've been donating some of my older decks recently just sort of clearing out and seeing what I've been working with and what I haven't been working with because um, as you guys know if you watch my channel that I don't like to hold on to decks if I'm not working with them. All my decks have a specific purpose and intention, either for personal, spiritual work, or in my readings for others. So let's get into this unboxing and first impressions. So The Wandering Star Tarot by Kat Pierce, an 80 card deck and guidebook. It comes in like this really lovely box. It's like this, it's like a really nice matte finish. It's sturdy. You can tell it's like good quality. This is, oh, it's actually a Hay House deck. Okay. And um, so it retails for $26.99 US and $35.99 Canada in Canada. And I got this on Amazon. And so I'll just read this to you. It says, there is a universe inside you. The Wandering Star Tarot is a compass for seekers and dreamers in search of treasures that lie within the heart, mind, and spirit. With unique hand-drawn illustrations, keywords worked subtly into the design of each image and a guidebook filled with hopeful messages quotes, and spreads, this deck invites readers of all levels to work intuitively with the cards for insight and guidance. Journey into this whimsical world of self-discovery and archetypes and meet two original cards that infuse the major arcana with powerful energy, the mother star and the creator. That sounds definitely up my alley when I first read that. And I mean, look at how beautiful the artwork is. So let's see, for me, artwork is really important in a deck. Also the creator's intentions. And so let's, uh, yeah, let's get into the cards. <clears throat> oh, I love that. There is a universe inside you. So really nice quality box. And I'll just, um, I'll show you the guidebook briefly before we get into the cards. So it comes with this guidebook here. Let's see, so it's about, hundred and ten pages. And there's a little bit about the creator there. And then this is, I think the same excerpt from the, from the box. And so, Let's see here for the majors. So for the majors, yeah, you get, there isn't an image reproduction, but you get the name of the card, a few keywords, a description, as well as a quote. Oh, I love that there's quotes. Oh, there's quotes from like famous people. That's really cool that there's a quote for each, for each card. I really love that. Look, I just saw here for the Hierophant. Uh, there's a quote from Gandhi and it says, my life is my message. So you get like about a page and it's a little bit shorter for the minors, but still, you still get a quote. Oh, I really love that. I really love that. Okay. Okay. So that's the guidebook. It's a really lovely guidebook too. that nice, like matte finish. I'm such a tactile person guys. Okay. So let's get into the cards themselves. And I'm always like curious to see, you know, what new decks are out there or what decks I haven't come across because, you know, you never know what you might connect with and you might, you never know, like, you know, there's always going to be new things coming out and maybe you could find something that ends up being your favorite deck of all time. Okay. So, 
So these are the backs. Really beautiful. I love the black and gold and then like the purples and pinks. And so just to give you a size comparison, it's like about the same size as a Rider weight. Maybe slightly, slightly bigger. We're working with our RWS size here. Okay, let's get into the cards. Let's see if I can come down a little bit closer even for you guys. Without totally wrecking my setup. <laughs> I'm just gonna bring the cards closer. So that's the fool. Oh, interesting, there are some key words on here. So you see purity, potential, risk, innocence, desire. Interesting choice of keywords. Don't love them, like some of them, don't love all those keywords for the fool, but. Oh my God, I love this magician. So there is keywords on each card, which is great for beginners. Power action, skill, power action. Interesting. Ooh, high priestess. So it does definitely have a feminine feel. Artwork, in my opinion, is beautiful. And again, there's the keywords, beauty, harmony, abundance, grace, fertility, love, nature. So those kind of keywords are really helpful when you're learning tarot. So definitely, it feels to me like so far a very beginner friendly deck. The emperor, law and order. The cards feel like really good quality too. Hierophant. I'm gonna move through them a little bit more quickly. So if you guys watch my videos, you might know that the lover's card is one of the cards I look at when I'm determining whether or not I love a deck. Not my favorite lover's card. Love, harmony, union, love, harmony. Mm, not really feeling those keywords. This deck might be a little too much love light for me. I like tarot decks to be balanced in their darkness and or rather shadow and light. Chariot. But it is really beautiful artwork. And I love the colors. And so you do get the number, the Roman numeral of the major arcana as well at the bottom there. You can see as long as well as the name. So also good for beginners. Wheel of Fortune. New beginnings, hmm. Transformation is a good keyword. I don't like new beginnings as a keyword for the death card. Yeah, I'm like not totally loving this deck. I like the artwork. I think it's very beginner friendly. I like that there's keywords, but I don't resonate with all the keywords that I'm seeing here, if I'm being honest. A pretty happy tower. <laughs> Don't love that star card. I also really, I, I tend to look at the sun card when I'm looking at a deck. Not my favorite sun card. Judgment, acceptance, awakening. Oh, world. Okay, 
So they've changed the names. Oh, these are the two additional cards. Mother Star, yes, and the Creator. So they've added a yes and no card. Mm -hmm. Tara, not really feeling those two cards. Maybe that'll change as I work with the deck, but my first impressions are, I don't really like when people change the structure of tarot. Like it's just for me, it's like there's a structure for a reason and, but you know, let's see. Career and your beginnings travel. I do, I do think that this would be great if you're learning tarot though, because the, having the key words when you're trying to understand the meanings of the 78 cards can be really useful. To me, this, like these wands cards don't feel like, oh, that's beautiful. I like that, four of wands. Creativity, union, and freedom. Yeah, I'm really not loving the keywords on this deck. I mean, some of the keywords. I don't, I don't want to discourage you if you're feeling drawn to the artwork. I mean, and you feel like it could be a useful tool for you learning tarot. Some of the keywords, though, if I'm being honest, don't completely resonate with my understanding and my experiential meaning of the cards. The artwork is gorgeous, although I do find that, I mean, it depends on how you read and how you access different levels of your intuition. It, some of the cards, the imagery is a little bit busy for me, which I can find distracting when I'm reading. Queen of Wands is also an image that I typically look at. Not my favorite Queen of Wands. Okay, I don't want to discount this deck because I haven't worked with it. I'm just unboxing it. I'm giving my initial first impressions. The artwork is beautiful. Some of the imagery is a little bit too busy for me. I don't resonate with all of the keywords. Let me know down below if um, what you think of the artwork, the keywords, have you worked with this deck? I would love to hear about your experience. I wanna give her a fair opportunity. I think, like I said, I keep saying the artwork does speak to me in, in a way. I mean, that's what made me purchase the deck. Hmm. So I don't wanna, you know, I wanna give myself the opportunity to work with this deck and have an experience before I completely, you know, um, before I decide that I'm gonna put it on the shelf or donate it. Oh, I don't, I don't like that 10 of cups. Yeah. This is just, maybe it's like, it feels a little bit cartoony to me and that's no disrespect to the artist. It's incredibly beautiful artwork, but I just feel like for me, there's, the, the, it's not resonating in terms of how I experience the energy of each of these cards. Oh, some animal imagery here. Oh, I like that two of swords. That's a beautiful two of swords. Let's do the keywords. Decision, choice, decision, choice. Yeah, that's a great, that feels like the two of swords to me. Three of swords. It's interesting how there's some animal imagery in the uh, in the suit of swords.
I, feel, I know what it is. I think for some of these cards, um, I'm not, they don't feel impactful. That's what it is. Like some of the, the energies just feel kind of a bit light and love, a bit like on the surface. Like it doesn't feel, yeah, some of the, the imagery doesn't feel impactful to me in terms of how I've experienced these cards in my journey with tarot. Like Queen of Swords, I don't know. Yeah. You know, and this is, I just want to say, like, this is, like, of course, my opinion, my first impressions. So if you're, like, loving this artwork and you're a beginner and you, you're you drawn to the keywords, or even if you're not a beginner and you, you work with tarot and you're like, wow, this artwork is incredible, I don't want to discourage you from having your own experience with the deck, for me, it's not really speaking to me as we move through the cards. It just feels like they don't feel very impactful. I feel like it's a bit too cartoony or something. And that's why I'm not feeling, you know, a hit when I, when I look at these cards, like Knight of Pentacles, is that like supposed to be a unicorn? Okay, and King of Pentacles. Okay, so I will do um, I will do a, a sample reading for you, so you can have a sense of the guidebook meanings. I do like in the guidebook how they had a quote for each card. So let's just do. I'm just gonna give the cards a little bit of a shuffle. And so we'll do an example from the guidebook. Okay. Okay. So, Queen of Pentacles came out. So I'm just going to read directly from the guidebook to give you a sense of the guidebook meaning. And like I said, the quote and keywords as well. Okay. So again, this is how much information you get. And this is the Queen of Pentacles. Loyal, charming, wise, loving. What a beauty. The Queen of Pentacles is loyal, charming, and wise. She appreciates the finer things in life, but does not overindulge. Abundance flows to her naturally, and she is effortlessly sensual and relaxed. Her words are deliberate and authentic. She will make you laugh one minute and then teach you a great lesson the next. She is adorned by many and has much to offer simply by fully embodying her true self. Her energy is nourishing and many long to be near her and to emulate her relaxed and graceful way of life. Take a page from her playbook and rest in the quiet knowing of your own unique loveliness. And then the quote at the bottom reads, I know of nothing more valuable when it comes to all important virtue of authenticity than simply being who you are. Charles R. Swindle. So I think that's a beautiful message. I think that's very well written. That definitely resonates in terms of the Queen of Pentacles energy. And you can see on the card here, it says loyal, charming, wise, loving. So, um, so yeah, there, that's your sample reading from the Wandering Star Tarot. Um, okay, so initial first impressions. I'm not loving this deck. I, I, I'm, my first impressions are that although the artwork and imagery is beautiful, I don't resonate with a lot of the keywords. I don't resonate with the imagery in terms of how impactful it feels when I initially go through these cards. I do wanna give myself time to have an experience working with the deck before I go ahead and say, you know, this is not a deck that I'm gonna resonate with. But my first impressions are, it feels a little love and lighty to me. It feels, doesn't feel like whole, like balanced in terms of shadow and light. And the imagery doesn't feel that impactful in terms of my experience with tarot. And it doesn't have the resonance that I, the resonance that I was looking for. But um, again, I do think it would be a great deck for beginners in terms of the keywords. I like the quote in the guidebook. So, I mean, there are some great things about this deck. It is 
it does seem very well made, well produced, good quality cardstock, good quality box. So those are my first impressions, the Wandering Star Tarot by Kat Pierce. And um, please let me know in the comment section down below, do you resonate with the artwork, with the artwork, with the key keywords? Have you worked with this deck? I would love to hear about it. And um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've been enjoying these videos. Um, and uh, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next video soon. Bye.